Welcome back to Seek Sen. Welcome back to Seek Strength. We're back in the new show. Now, when I say we, it's literally just this guy right here. Zach is back in America. Clarence is back in Japan, never to be seen again on the new show ever again. Fitz isn't here. He's gone to Canada for some fishing with his old fella. Very wholesome. On that trend, I'm very glad to be back in the great nation of Sikistan. Back with my family. Reject that hedonistic treadmill. Reject mediocrity. Embrace self-fulfillment. Embrace your family and your friends. Foster good relationships. Improve yourself. Slay your enemies and be a good person anyway on with the new show so it that title actually isn't that clickbaity but i did want to draw you in a little bit just reel you in slightly so in this video of this 270 kilo by 10 back squat which is unfortunately the only video left of this 270 kilos by 10 from toshiki yamamoto he is squatting this and the only reason he did that 270 kilos for a set of 10 is because he saw Clarence doing 265 by 10 and it motivated him to beat Clarence. Now he said this while we were over in Japan. Unfortunately, we didn't get any footage of this, but I think Jang or Clarence might have gotten a clip of that, so we might see that in one of their videos. Jang and Clarence have a load of videos to go. Uh, we have a couple of good videos left to go, so I hope you enjoy those as they're released. But Toshiki said the only reason he did that 270 for a set of 10 is because he wanted to be Clarence and he was just motivated to do better than them. Waiting to do when he saw Clarence do 265 was to beat him at a set of 10 on the squats. So I really thought that was quite funny and it was so funny that he just said it straight up. Uh, he didn't, you know, pretend. Uh, he didn't pretend online or anything like that, that he, that he was he was trying to hide anything. He literally said it was just to be Clarence and that's what motivated him to do that, which I thought was super cute. And I'm hoping that motivates Clarence to try and beat him for 272 or something for a set of 10. But on that vein, my own squat training is going really well, as you might have seen from that 225 by 5. Now, I'll talk about this in my training vlogs in the future, but am I going to keep doing the 5 by 5 And even Clarence has asked me this, and the answer is yes, because it is fun. And that's the overriding reason, because I want to. Is it the best way? No. Am I going to keep doing it? fuck yeah for as long as i need to or as long as it still seems feasible so that's the only footage because tashiki's instagram got hacked or his old instagram he still has a lot of these old videos but they're on old phones he said and so unfortunately we're left with these motivational compilations anyway thought you'd enjoy that little tidbit i thought that that was pretty funny now first up we have got Tian Tao cleaning 200 kilos, obviously quite a paltry clean from Tian Tao but we don't get to see a whole lot of heavy lifts from Tian Tao or very frequently so I thought it was quite newsworthy. Now Tian Tao is in a quite a precarious position leading up to the Paris Olympics next year in 2024. So he has his rival Li Dae Yin who is also moving up to the 89 kilos whereas Tian Tao has moved back down to the 89. Now, Lee Dae In is putting in quite a consistent performance we see across competitions, whereas Tian Tao, of course, is Tian Heart Attack Tao, and has unfortunately cost him some international medals. So his viability or his position on the Paris Olympic team is up for debate, and Lee Dae In looks like he's more likely going to make that team. I think the deciding factor will be is if Tian Tao can pull out a very large clean and jerk for the Paris Olympics. So... Li Dian's snatch is ahead of where Tian Tao's is at currently in competition. So we've seen this 180 kilos from Li Dian, and we've seen him repeat it recently in another Chinese competition. But his clean and jerk isn't quite up to scratch compared to the other 89s like Nino, Carlos, or past performances from Tian Tao at a lighter body weight. Do I think Tian will surpass him in the clean and jerk? Likely in terms of absolute weights, but... Is the Dian likely to put up a better total more consistently? I think looking at it now, it's very likely. However, I'm not sure if Li Dian is up for a 220 kilo clean and jerk in competition. It is up for debate and it will be interesting to see how the rest of this year proceeds and we'll see how the extra weight gain benefits Li Dian on his clean and jerk. So it's clearly benefited his snatch and I think we'll probably see more onto his snatch. But on his clean and jerk, 
He's not the fastest clean and jerker, and those heavyweights do require some good speed. And the extra body weight, while not will make him sore, it could potentially affect that speed a little bit. So money on the moment is probably the in. Personally, I would probably pick Tian Tao as he has the potential for those massive lifts, but it is all to play for as of yet. So this is a big year for Tian Tao to make his name uh, and a bigger year for Lee the end to make his name. Next up, we've got Lee Huan Hua, who from this post from mass strength is potentially in the 89 kilo class as well. So we've seen Lee compete as a 96 and a 102, and here's a 175 kilo snatch from him. Now, if we line him up with Lee Dian and Tian Tao, he's probably the bottom rung of the Chinese selection, given how good and how consistent or how well performed the other lifters are, I should say. Not consistent for, unfortunately, for Tian Tao. Here's a 175 kilo snatch from him, uh, the weight moving very well. His lifts aren't quite up there. They're very, very close. But unless he can add, you know, five, maybe five kilos to each of those lifts in competition, it's unlikely he will make it. However, I particularly like his clean and jerk because his lockout is beautiful and his cleans are very, very sharp to look at. It's very possible he can make the team and maybe people are kind of forgetting about him a little bit if he is going down to the 89 kilo category. It'd be very interesting to see how his training transpires. And of course, given those three lifters and they won't be able to send more than two per weight class to international competitions or the Olympics, it is super competitive and I imagine incredibly motivational for all of those training as you are fighting hard for your spot. So it'll be very interesting to see how this pushes these lifters. Uh, I wouldn't have thought he was going to move down to the 89s given that he competed as a underweight 102 most recently at the Asian Championships. I would have thought probably filling out the 102 class would have been a better move for his own chances. Maybe not for medals, but certainly for making the Olympics. Uh, but again, all remains to be seen as how these athletes move around. But a very, very, very aesthetic 175 kilo snatch from Mr. Gigachat. Now, sticking with these absolutely notorious 89 kilo lifters, we have Lee Day Yin himself making an appearance in the new show. We've talked about him a lot. And here he is with a 290 kilo deadlift, 3.25 body weight with a hook rip. And fucking hell, he looks like a fucking horse. I, he is so jacked in this video. It's ludicrous. It is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, very, very clean deadlift. The back musculature, the arm musculature. He is busting out of that 89 kilo category. So he moved up from the 81s. Uh, you may remember Seb thought he would have an issue filling out the 89s, and Lidian has proved that to be not the case. Absolutely just, I can't even describe the words of how jacked he is in terms of weightlifting. Now, could this negatively affect his positions and his speed? Maybe. Uh, it might have some effect, but it's very, very interesting to see how his training transpires. He has that upward momentum, and he's moving up into that weight class. And he has those extra kilos to make a lot of use from. So it'll be very interesting to see how his training goes. It's unlikely we'll see many training lifts from him as we tend to not see a whole lot from the Chinese national team in terms of heavy lifts. So we will be waiting for competition lifts from Mr. Dayan. And judging by his physique here, he is filling out that weight class. Ritvar Suarez is a laughing weightlifter. Here he is snatching 160 kilos. Now, this is a personal best, but I think this might be at his current body weight. So he is in the 73 kilo category. He is the current European champion and well-earned. He has come back from two shoulder surgeries and he's coming back into these positions, which is incredible. So this 160 kilo snatch is incredibly fast. They are training in the Uzbek National Training Center and... He is potentially referring to a bodyweight PR uh, because I'm pretty sure he's done 160 or a little bit more as a heavier at least. Uh, but of course, when you're competing at the elite international level, these bodyweight PRs really, really do count and really mean a lot uh, when you're pushing those upper limits of performance. So we've seen him do 170 from blocks and a very, very sharp 170. 
Uh, Rit Farris has been on the podcast before and it was one of the more interesting episodes because a lot of people referenced it when they thought they wanted to be professional athletes in their kind of uh, Excel daydreams when they're sitting at their desk and when they listened to it they realised that it is brutal and it of course slapped them in the face for reality. Rit Farris works very very hard, very nice and very humble dude to talk to and I wish him all the best and it'll be very interesting to see how his training transpires over the next year. Another comeback is Arley Mendes. Now Arley is on the fucking comeback. He is we're seeing 2017 Arley coming back like an absolute train. He is snatching 160 here and it looks as quick as ever for a double little double and it is whew, Arley's positions are so powerful. He is Largely dependent on his speed and power in his positions. He pulls through so fast in that pull under and the turnover. His timing is immaculate, especially on these heavy snatches. He is, as well, a very, very jacked weightlifter. Uh, quite a lackluster performance since 2017, but whatever train he's on at the moment, he is absolutely smashing through these lifts. So these 160 snatch doubles are blisteringly fast. And we haven't seen any super heavy clean and jerks from him recently. I think the most we've seen was maybe a month or two ago at 195. Judging by these snatches, I think it's likely he's surpassed that at the moment. But he's probably keeping those clean and jerks under wraps up uh, ahead leading up into the World Championships in Saudi Arabia. But these 160s are something else. And if it's any indication of his current performance, we might see a return to prior form from Arley. And I am very excited to see what he lifts in competition, given that he's attempted world record clean and jerks before. Azuma Rakui, definitely said that wrong, squatted 275 kilos at approximately somewhere between 73 and 81 kilos. He is 18. He literally just turned 18 this year. And he has done 270 when he's 17. Now, this is coming from Jang Ho, uh, the owner of We Lift Weights. And this is a ludicrous squat. So he's 78 kilo body weight, 18 years old. And he is squatting 275 kilos. High bar as fuck and absolutely sticking the isometric. Uh, turning it into a pause squat at the top. Uh, frighteningly s- strong squatting from a teenager. Very interesting positions. We've got that kind of wide stance at the bottom. Uh, super narrow grip up top. Uh, he's got that 18-year-old upper body mobility. But a ludicrous squat PR in the black ships or CrossFit Yogi, uh, which, of course, we were there most recently. And a Macla gym, very, very cool to train in. Equipment is phenomenal, and the aircon is on point. Nick Singleton is cleaning 175 kilos here. He is an American football player, and he is doing this in the stereotypical weight room, boys slapping hands and watching. Now, a little bit rough, not going to be like, not going to lie. He's not wearing weightlifting shoes. Seems to be in some kind of uh, maybe some kind of Mekons or similar Nike shoe, but he is absolutely powering through this 175 kilo clean. Uh, very very interesting to see uh, the the number of cleans we're seeing from these collegiate and these professional uh, NFL players and it's very very interesting to see just how heavy they get with those cleans and we've seen quite a few of them getting into the 170s 180s and even some of the best hitting those mid 190 regions and it's of credible display of strength and performance not necessary to actually do these heavy cleans and if I was coaching athletes uh, specifically in these types of sports you wouldn't really see the need to do those heavy cleans the ability to do them is what makes it useful for your sport doing the actual 1RM or doing this 175 kilos isn't strictly necessary the benefit is from the training you got from the ability to do that and doing the actual heavy clean in my opinion isn't always necessary if it can be done in a safe manner perfect go for it and of course you have to push your on rms at some point or push your working weights uh, but it does leave the room for injuries especially if the technique could potentially break down at the heavier weights and oftentimes athletes in snc sports specifically nfl are very very valuable athletes they're expensive athletes and as an snc coach you don't want to be breaking them as it is a very expensive vas to be breaking Still incredible lifting and always entertaining to see American football players cleaning any kind of heavyweight. 
Now, it wouldn't be a Seekistan new show without a thrower at it again. Thrower's doing some stupid shit. And this is Eric Sullins, who's a hammer thrower, hang muscle snatching, 110 kilos. Very, very clean hang muscle snatch. Uh, really smooth positions. He's really focusing on lowering the barbell down in a good position. And here he is in a gym that you may recognize from another mildly famous thrower. Apparently that other thrower might be one of the best ever, but you'll notice that this gym looks a little bit familiar, this barn gym. And this 110 kilo hang muscle snatch is very impressive. Uh, quite useful or moderately useful for throwers. And throwers, of course, are always doing the heaviest weights possible when they do any form of Olympic lift variation because throwers are routinely at it. Now, long time new show appearer, Nicholas Dupree's South African monster is squatting 405 kilos at 123 and a half body weight wraps, vivos, and fucking hell, 405 kilos. So Nicholas Dupree's, I think, just never gets enough credit for how fucking strong he is. And I think we'll probably see, hopefully, if he competes sometime soon, see some very, very big weights from, her, from him. Either way, this 405 kilo squat is absolutely something else. It's got to be one of the strongest squatters at the moment, uh, specifically kind of that body weight ratio for the heavier lifters. So he, I would assume, is competing in the 120 kilo class if he will compete in powerlifting. And this did not look maximal. Uh, it looked incredibly smooth for 405 kilos, especially when he's not 170, 180 kilos body weight. Uh, Nicholas is quite lean and to see this kind of lift is crazy not unexpected from Nicholas given some of the rep PRs we've seen him making and repping 370 kilos or 375 kilos so it's very interesting to see where this momentum will take him in the long run and he of course is going for that uber wide low bar but very deep now this is Ashley Watson some kind of gymnast someone tagged me in this it's not lifting related, but it is new show worthy because it is f fucking crazy. Uh, so he is on the gymnastics bars and he is going for essentially a very, 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 very long monkey swing and he makes it. There's not a whole lot to say about this, but fucking hell, that is the amount of hand-eye coordination, the amount of psychological testicles you need for this. The amount of accuracy you need, the amount of experience, and just, I'm sure we can all envision how wrong this could have gone. Uh, not alone is the accuracy to do that very impressive, but also the uh, the sheer mental fortitude to attempt this. This isn't really something they can probably train a whole lot, as obviously those bars aren't very movable, so it's essentially, you know, straight to max, or... Uh, there's nothing in between you know you can't slowly bring them further apart so very very impressive feat of athleticism from ash watson graham hicks is going for quite a big deadlift sometime in the near future we've got him doing 430 kilos for a set of three so he is quite a good deadlifter i think you could say i think it's fair to say that 430 kilos for three reps is a solid deadlift so very very clean reps uh, I assume he might be competing at the World Deadlift Championships and they do allow you to wear a suit at that. Now, there's a lot of talks of how much the suit adds to your deadlift or how much of a difference it makes. It clearly adds something as we do see a lot of the strongmen wearing them in competition when they're deadlifting. Uh, but how much it actually adds is quite interesting. It's probably the last vestige of equipment that we see in terms of that kind of... Uh, kind of equipped the powerlift thing appearing in certain parts of strength training so we don't see a whole lot of bench shirts anymore we don't see a whole lot of squat suits anymore but we do see a bit of these deadlift suits in strongman training now the deadlift by its nature isn't super open to any amount of equipment helping a whole lot uh, but i would be interested to see if anyone could put some average numbers on how much the deadlift suit actually helps you know we've seen massive deadlifts from people without these deadlift suits uh, so it'll be interesting to see how much maybe for example someone like grain hips would think here how much is this is adding to his deadlifts or how much of a difference it's actually making thanks for watching today's new show we will be back there was normal broadcasting 
staff next week, myself and Fitz. Today's new show is brought to you by Seek a Sleep, the sleep supplement we are currently bringing to you. Now, why does Seek a Sleep help your sleep? Because it contains some of the most important nu- micronutrients you need to get a better night's sleep. And very good night's sleep are one of the most important things you can do to be happy, healthy, and more importantly, performing well.